you think they would have ever seen a tank do donuts? <laughs> I'm running out of room for all these things. If someone wants to buy CBRT, we have plenty. Except for this one, I've sold this to a chap called Ben. Yeah, get my phone in my pocket. It does drive I'm bloody good. Obviously, not drink right now, I'll do such a thing. Right, let's go and have a look at the T34. for the Centurion the other weekend. Never mind. No inferior lights. Don't need them anyway. Look, I haven't charged any of my batteries up since the other day. we've got the uh, bolts off outside we've got to disconnect the exhaust uh, now obviously this isn't genuine this is uh, someone's idea of a bodge and um, it's it's pretty awful so I've got the cheapest set of side cutters I could find I've literally had to spray with WD-40 to even get them to open cut all that absolute garbage off looks like it's done the same either side oh, yes he has what an absolute hero And then hopefully the exhaust should part here in some sort of strange fashion. Look, that's the weird seal. It's like bandage look. So will that come off? Mm. Well that should be off, so I'll do the other side well now. What an absolute legend. Take it, obviously, that's what it should have been like. Um, he obviously just lost the bolts. It's totally the wrong tool for this, but we're gonna, we're gonna make it work. That's what, that's 
what he's obviously lost. Seems to be a bit, one a bit better this side. We'll come back to this. <laughs> so I think that's undone. Proper Halfords repair, this is, isn't it? I wonder if you put some spinners on while you're at it. Yeah, it's probably how they were, to be fair. I have no idea, but it looks like absolute bodge, if you ask me. Ow. However, everything's sharp. Noily. Right. Got some of that rope out, fuck them off. Alright, I think now we need to take these covers off and then pull the exhaust tips out. The only tool you need when you're working with tanks is a, a set of gas. It's the spanner that under absolutely everything. Nothing is too tight when you've got the set of gas. If Sputnik had used the right size fucking bolt. Oh, look at that. heat makes all the difference this is the genuine sizes for anyone's asking I couldn't be bothered to try and find the right size spanner now the only trouble is once you've heated up the gas and it gets to the stage which I call finger tight the temptation to try and twist it with your fingers is very high I can't say I've ever done it before what but you're saying is don't try this at home kids yeah basically this is the stage where you, you so often you, you try and for some ever, for whatever reason you try and just pick it out with your hands while it's still basically cherry red. Well, I'm getting a little bit impatient, so I'm going to try doing it with a rag. Here's where I probably burn myself. Ow! There we go. 
As easy as that. Come on, fit. Oh, it's the wrong size, isn't it, actually? When they were building these, they couldn't just use all the same size. They're all different. All different size bloody bombs. That'll be hard. Right. Got some weird cable thing around the exhaust so I can't really see. So I think what we'll do now, we'll get the forklift, put the chain on there, and we'll either pull this back or we'll do a mad skid with the forklift trying to do it. So let's do that now before it's dark. MOT's forklifts look away now. So I definitely haven't got the gas and gas to hole in the end to do this. Right. It's like a hook a duck, eh? But it's a bit worse. This is the part why it'll either work or it won't. I'm not going to go too far for a start in case we're pulling on stuff because those exhausts look like they're on cables and they are. Might be worth you coming up and having a look at this strange setup that's going on here. Obviously, the old fault list passed all the, all the health and safety checks. It looks to me like the exhaust, the exhaust had a, a thing on a cable. Someone that knows about 234s will probably enlighten us in the comments. But it looks to me like the exhaust system had a valve or a flap that you can open with a cable that diverts some of the exhaust pressures into the air cleaner. Which is like an early days EGR system if you ask me, so that's fucking rubbish. But someone will probably tell me because it's designed to work in Arctic conditions or some nonsense like that. Which probably makes a bit of sense, but we're not in Arctic conditions. And whoever worked on this tank was an utter bodging, I won't say it, but yeah, it's not that impressive. That was on very well. Nice, I think she's going to need some new cables. Yeah, look, so when you pull that cable, whatever that was doing, I don't know if you can see that, because it's getting a little dark, that's working a butterfly valve, and obviously letting some exhaust pressures back into the air cleaner for reasons unknown to man, but I'm going to uh, disconnect that for now. And the other side. Mm, it looks like it's disconnected itself. Okay, this is good. Right, stay there and I shall uh, simply fold it down. no one was hurt. It seems the uh, 
the hinges that were welded on in Soviet Russia aren't particularly very good. However, how easy is that now to get at everything? Right, well, now we can actually see what's going on. Um, obviously, these bands here will actually steer the vehicle, I believe. So when you pull the, uh, it's a bit close. When you pull the uh, tillers, that obviously applies this band, which tightens up against this face here, and then locks that drive, if you like, sending all the other power to the other track, making it turn. So it's pretty simple, a bit like a bulldozer, really. And in fairness. Looking at these uh, these wet these linings, they're actually not that worn out. But I'm going to get them sent away and some new linings on anyway because we're going to make a job of it. And obviously the uh, Soviet steel hinges are made out of cheese. You can also get the starter motor off fairly easily. And uh, I think the next thing we'll be taking off, which we'll probably do in the next video will be will be that as far as the armor and then there's like a bulkhead between the uh, gearbox and the engine and i imagine we'll take the gearbox out probably that fan this big green piece we'll probably take that off and then uh, then maybe we'll try and lift the engine out well i think actually we need to take the radiators out before that to be honest i have no idea um we're just making it up as we go along really but um It'll all go back together, that's the main thing. But it's actually not in that awful condition, to be honest. So that wire there, it's all coiled up. I don't know whether you noticed, but before we took that rear armour off, there was, um, there was a bit of conduit that went either side of that, and that went to little lights. And I did wonder where the wiring was, but it looks like it's... Uh, it's all there, so that's a good thing when I want to wire them back up. Right, so I'm going to move that out of the way, and I think before it starts, we'll just whip the start motor off because this thing it works, but it also makes a lot of fire. You know, it's more of a flamethrower than a starter motor. So uh, I think we're going to get that sent away and uh, and have it rewound because it looks well, it's absolutely bollocks to be honest. So let's hope um, the lads at charging start can sort that out for us but otherwise the motor and the gear drives are good in it so if they can rewind the motor we'll be laughing so we'll get that off now Now that lovely little light start to measure it up. We can have a bit of a better look at it. Uh, and basically, basically, there's a series of brushes 
uh, and these these stainless steel sprung loaded devices push the brushes at the core which you can probably just see down in that slot there the core of the uh, starter and what's actually happened is that core has gone bad so rather than actually uh, um, making electronic making it a uh, electromagnetic field it's just directly shorting out on the core creating lots and lots of fire uh, and, and not turning this bit very well um, the actual solenoid is working well so when you when you press this, press it to start basically this is another like electric magnet and what this does is this forces back with quite a lot of power actually which pulls this arm back and it actually in turn fires the cog out that then meshes with the uh, with the uh, flywheel which then turns the engine um, so all of that side of it's good it's just the back side that's being naughty um, so we'll be sending that away and while it's off um, we'll also paint it up because it looks like well it looks like garbage so that'll be another thing that when it goes on it'll be like brand new and hopefully working like brand new as well so uh, I think that'll do for today I'm uh, tired and it's too dark so we'll, we'll call it a day <laughs>